Welcome back to Arise Prime Time, where we offer perspectives on the news and talking points of the day. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now, you might have heard that Nigeria's Supreme Court has ordered the central bank to allow the use of old banknotes until the end of the year. It's the latest development in the federal government's botched attempt to introduce new banknotes. All old notes were previously due to cease being legal tender by April, but a shortage of cash led to widespread frustration and protest. The justices said that not enough notice was given to the public before the old notes were withdrawn drawn and that enough of the new notes were released. Uh, many people were unable to get cash to pay for food and many were forced to sleep outside banks. Uh, reading out the ruling, Justice Emmanuel Agim said the correct process had not been followed. 16 states had challenged the redesign of the Naira notes, saying that the deadline was too tight. Today, today is a day of happiness for all Nigerians. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has given us all the reliefs that we sought for. By a very unanimous judgment, the full court of seven justices gave a unanimous judgment, 7-0, that all our prayers to the court have been accepted. They have proven that this is the place and the hope of all men, not just common man, men and, men and women across this federation. Secondly, this particular decision today has laid a solid foundation for our incoming president, the president-elect, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu, to start and cruise on a solid foundation. This particular decision today has proven that Nigerian law is a respecter of no one. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Arise Legal Analyst Chimwe Izebu, who was at the Supreme Court today when that ruling was delivered, and by the Professor of Communications, Arise News Analyst, and Deputy Dean of the Postgraduate School at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adeni. Thank you very much indeed to both of you. Thank you. And let me start with you, uh, Chimwe, because you were at the Supreme Court today. Just yes, summarize for us what happened there. Yes, I was at the Supreme Court today, Charles. Mm. Uh, it was a jammed, packed Supreme Court we had today. And um, I have the utmost respect for our Apex Court because we have had uh, the most remarkable day in the history of judiciary. Uh, the Supreme Court went uh, ahead to grant the Clayman's uh, petition uh, saying that uh, the, the Naira swap uh, policy should be extended to, th to the 31st of December this year. It was actually uh, a very uh, unusual uh, day because um, even though the court was very packed full, there was a, one or two jokes from the Lord Justices when they, when they announced appearances for one of the uh, one of the counsel for defendants wasn't there, mm. and um, he just made a joke and said that he should be here or she should be here because it was a day for cash. And that uh, money was was very <laughs> very uh, the money was very paramount. Anyway, Section two three two of the Nigerian Constitution gave the Supreme Court jurisdiction to hear the matter. Uh, there was a preliminary objection by the defendants, the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, saying that uh, the Supreme Court should not have heard the matter, and that it should have gone to the Federal High Court, uh, saying that Section two five one allows jurisdiction under that uh, to, be, to be for banking and financial institutions. Mm. However, the judge, uh, the judge, the seven of them, gave unanimous decision today and made it quite clear that Section 251 of the Nigerian Constitution could not apply, right. uh, that it was only uh, in relation to, to uh, banking and financial matters. But where it has to do with cases or disputes between the states and the federation such as we have today between the governors and the federation that the supreme court had original jurisdiction under right. section 232 now the, the court actually made um, very clear that the president's directive was unconstitutional and was illegal uh, as well as uh, that he had not complied uh, the cbn governor 
had not complied with the provisions of Section 20 of the CBN Act. Right. Okay. Now, well, that's that's uh, very, very just very quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just I'll just round up. Uh, the the conditions under Section 20 of the CBN Act states very clearly that reasonable notice must be given to members of the public mm. before such a, an IRS swap policy is implemented. So the justices all agreed that uh, three months was not reasonable notice, that they should have extended it as far, and that's why they extended as far as 31st right. December. Okay, thank year. you very much indeed, Shingwe, for thank that you. summary. And let me come to you, Prof. The Supreme Court giving an early unpleasant goodbye present to, to the soon-to-be-gone Buhari administration, overturning a ban, as she said, on the use of old Naira notes. Um, what do you make of that? Well, it's um, a good development, quite a very good um, relief, um, going by what uh, the populace, the kind of pain we've gone through in the last couple of weeks, you know, where many of us have not seen cash. You know, mm. And of course, we know what the, the kind of economy that we have, an informal economy, you know, where uh, cash is still the king, you know. Um, a lot of, um, you know, elements have suffered. A lot of sectors have suffered in the economy, particularly uh, those at the lower rung of the ladder, you know, who uh, trade in small cash, you know, 200 naira note, 300 naira note. <laughs> Even the ones that have been allowed, you know, to circulate are no longer in existence. You hardly can find it. Mm. And we're having people trading in cash. You know, for you to get cash, you have to uh, bring out some money to you know, uh, to be able to buy some amounts of cash, as the case could be. You know, but again, we have had again that the Supreme Court judgment is rather, I mean, so many of legal gymnastics, le legalese, all of flying all around. So we don't know what the situation is now. We have had people saying that it's simply declaratory, not necessarily executory. Mm. Um, we will need um, further explanations on some of these things. But the bottom line, you know, the fundamental long-term objective for us to have cash, available on the on the street you know? absolutely um the lawyers have done their own the judiciary has the, they have done their bits but we need practical presence of naira let the economy get back to where it was somehow where cash was not a cash is cash commodity mm -hmm. i mean it's very ironic for cash to be a scarce community. You have your money in the bank, you cannot assess it. Mm. You, are asked, you are sometimes asked to transfer money. You transfer, you get locked down somewhere. You have to wait hours on end, sometimes days, um, for you to get it. Sometimes it doesn't even arrive. You go back to the bank, you fill form, and yet you still continue to wait. Money mm. that you have, you cannot spend it. You know, the bottom line, you know, irrespective of all these judgments, you know, with the final answer we want is for us to have cash circulating before right. we know that. The Supreme Court, yes, rightly, they've intervened. We're happy. 31st of December is quite a long time to give to, to give us that, to, for us to enjoy that relief. But we need to see reality on mm. ground. Well, that, that's a good point. And uh, Chingwe, in terms of why this policy was introduced in the first place, mm. has all that now completely failed? I mean, the issue of excess cash in circulation, which was affecting inflation, the issue of the hoarding of cash, vote buying, etc. Well, the, pr the president of the Federation uh, gave a, a speech, if I remember, on the 16th of February, uh, on which he actually uh, made a, a, a form of conciliatory, mm. um, I think it was more conciliatory and compassionate, as opposed to being uh, strict, uh, where he actually uh, confirmed that the 200 uh, old Naira notes could continue to be in circulation. I think he had... Uh, uh, he acted in good faith. The CBN governor acted in good faith under Section 20, particularly because uh, uh, they had the mind that they could stamp out insecurity mm. and corruption, just as you said, Charles. And I believe that um, if both notes go hand in very pursue side by side, that should be, a, I think that should be enough to curtail the problems that the government has at the moment. But whether or not the, the Naira swap policy, which the Supreme Court uh, gave a, a very good decision for today, whether that could be implemented and how will it be implemented mm. is, the, is the question. Because one of the justices actually made mention of, of it, Justice Emmanuel Adim, who gave the lead judgment today. He said that the, the president ought to give us uh, mechanisms or show mechanisms as to how the new Naira policy will be implemented. Right. Okay. So, 
So right. I hope, I do hope that it would curtail corruption and insecurity. But as it is now, we don't know whether the, right. the policy will be impl implemented as such. Right, mm -hmm. okay. And Prof, um, of course, all this possibly affected the mood of Nigerians as they headed into the presidential elections. How do you reckon it's going to play into the governorship and state assembly elections, which are coming up in about a week or so? Uh, Charles, sometimes in our system, maybe it's not really peculiar to us, you actually find it difficult. Sometimes you struggle to know what to believe. Mm -hmm. You know, ahead of the presidential election, um, there were concerns or there were uh, pronouncements that the cash trap policy was meant to prevent food buying. You know, so if you um, confiscate people's cash, you know, there won't be plenty in the, on the streets where you can use to influence voters. But the day after the election, what are we um, hearing? What was the outcome? There are still allegations and counter allegations that they were vote buying. Mm -hmm. That instead of cash, you know, people were using. I even had an allegation today that dollars were used. Some people said homo cards and all that. You know, some other kind of means of exchange were used. So where, where, at what point are we going to say that we've got into the end, that this story will end? Um, we may not really know what to believe again mm. going into the governorship election. Um, if politicians want to influence people, my sense is that they will find a way around it and still get people influenced. What matters is um, to grow the belief system of the people, you know, conscientize them, sensitize them on the need not to allow their consciences uh, to be bought, you know, whether they are using cash or using material things. That's what matters, really. People have needs a higher level of understanding, higher level of education. And it can come maybe in the short on the long term basis. In the short term basis, of course, we know that people are really ordinarily sensitized to a, in a period of election. Look at the turnout. You know, look at the, des um, the passion, the enthusiasm they show towards election. So if they have this enthusiasm, which comes naturally, you know, their civic responsibility, ordinarily voluntary. And the next thing is for them to, to give them that understanding that, look, yes, you are doing this because you have, you have concern for your, for your status as a citizen, bona fide citizens of this country. But you need to go beyond that, beyond that and make sure that you exercise your franchise without any form of influence. That's what matters, really. But to say whether politicians cannot circumvent the process, cannot go behind and still influence them, I mean, we will be completely out of it. And do not forget that we have a system that is very weak. The institutions are weak. Even implementation of laws can still be very weak. Like she said, some of the Supreme Court justices said today, now they have made this declaration. What about implementation? Mm. You know, how do we go um, uh, from there? Uh, we can say that there's no cash, but I, I, it's, my guess is that there will still be cash where to be. You know, because we are much more powerful than ourselves in this country, and people who know their way will still find their way one way or the other. You know, so that's the contradiction that we have in our system, and we may not be able to root things out. You know, if our right. nation is a nation of possibilities, and unfortunately, some of those possibilities are negative. Mm. But we want possibilities that would rather be positive, you know, so that we can propel us um, in the right direction. Okay, on that note, thank you very much indeed thank to you. both uh, of you. Uh, professor Abiodun Adeni is a professor of communications, a RISE News Analyst, and Deputy Dean of the Postgraduate School at Bayes University in Abuja. And of course, Chingwe Izebu, uh, who was at the Supreme Court today, I have to add, is an Arise News legal analyst. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again next week. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, bye-bye and thank you for watching.